It's possible. Tomorrow morning you and me could be dead, isn't it? Hello? Possible or no? It's not our wish, possible or no? If you know it is possible, that it is possible tomorrow morning I could be dead, would you have time to quarrel with somebody? Oh! Dude! Oh my gosh! This… this episode has just had that theme of… Yeah. It started with the profound words come from a profound life. Yes. Profound life comes from a recognition of life. Mm. Recognition of life God. comes from recognition of mortality. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Welcome back <laughs> to another episode of Learn With Us. What do we do? We take YouTube videos that are worth your time. And we learn from them with you. With you. Today. Today we're back with another fan favorite, the man, the myth, the mystic. Oh. Hey. <laughs> yeah, and it's all about him talking about the importance of being alone and being silent. Uh, one of our subscribers suggested that, so thank you, subscriber. Shout out. We love when Shout you guys out. send us videos. If you yeah. have other videos that you would like us to learn from with you, let us know in the comment section below. The rhymes are just on today. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. All right, dude. You know what? <laughs> Let's just start this video. If one knows, if one enjoys being alone, it means they are definitely better organized psychologically, emotionally, far better organized than others. People go into silence. For uh, from three days to three years, four years like this, people go on silence, not saying a word to anybody. Well, in today's world where if they're having breakfast, they must take a picture of the breakfast, I'm having breakfast, if I'm going to the toilet, I'm going to the toilet. And when this is the world, <laughs> to just shut up and sit in one place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've been thinking about that a decent amount, not necessarily taking vows of silence mm. but more so the importance of not speaking if you don't have something to say mm. if you don't have something really nourishing to say if you're i find that sometimes i speak up just because i feel like oh i should fill this void of silent time and we should be talking about something whereas maybe we're helping each other more if we're just allowing each other me and whoever i'm with to just be in each other's presence and feel comfortable. If we don't have something really interesting to say, then just be in each other's presence. And that's cool too, you know? Yeah, I feel like it comes back to the whole idea that we value ourselves a lot today based on our outputs. Yeah. Oh. And that is where you get into this idea of if I'm not saying things, if I'm not bringing more Dude. content to the table, what am I doing? Wow. And it's really interesting that you see people like Sadhguru and all of these really big spiritual leaders and people who are saying the absolute most profound things, not focused on the fact that they're saying those things and yeah. like the content they're putting out. Yeah. This is a big lesson that I came to a few months ago that profound words are simply an offput of a profound life. When he told me that the first time, this was me. <laughs> <laughs> but think about that. Like the people who Sadhguru just seems to effortlessly constantly say things mm. that uplift humans and give you way more insight. And it's never coming from this place of I need to say something. It's coming from a yes. place of these are things I know inside of me and are almost like running through you. Mm. And it's because you're able to be in that silence. You're not messing with what you are, as he says. Wow. That's really cool. Profound words are a product of a profound life. I had a, I had a dream last night. I'm not going to explain the whole thing, but I was speaking to this one entity who I knew I needed to listen to but they were saying something that I really wanted to ask a question about. But there was someone else next to me in the dream 
who is just staring at that entity and nodding and listening fully. And as I went to ask a question, I saw that person just nodding and like fully listening. And I was like, I need to not ask a question right now and listen. Whoa. And it completely changed the course of the dream. When normally I would have tried to like ask something. That's epic. Yeah. That's crazy. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, because if you're always thinking of your counterpoint or your question that's coming up, it's harder for you to be actively listening to the person. You're not absorbing You're not absorbing it. One thing you guys can try when someone is talking to you about a problem they have and you could give your opinion, rather than doing that, just agree with them or repeat the last few words they say and then go silent. So if you said like, I'm having trouble with... Um, whatever my eating habits or my sleeping habits, Mm -hmm. I could say that's very difficult. Like, I I understand that that's really hard for you. And then pause there. And then if you give them a few seconds, they will always want to go deeper. And they'll start talking again in a way that if you, if I had input my information right there and said, well, when I can't sleep well, I do X. Immediately, I'm saying that my way of dealing with things is the way they should be dealing with things. Oh. Whereas if you let them speak, you'll come to much more profound ideas about what they could do for themselves. That's sick. Are you, are you on life? I'm just asking. Hello? No, no, please look at this. <laughs> please look at this in 24 hours time. How many moments are you really life? Most of the time you're just a bundle of thoughts, emotions, ideas, opinions, ideologies, prejudices, something. There he goes! You know what? It's a double. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we'll give that the classic universal bar stamp. Universal (laughs) bars! How many moments of a day are you really alive more than just a bundle of thoughts and emotions? Mm. How crazy is that? That's something every time I've been meditating lately, I've been noticing that I keep realizing, oh shoot, the coolest thing about me and about everything else is that it's just, it's just all bursting with life. Mm. And I wasn't thinking about that all day. That might be during my however long meditation, but the whole breath of the day, I might be realizing that only a few times. And it's, and it's when you're recognizing that, that you are most just being, you are being that life at that yeah. time. And I'm smiling. Every time mm. I come to that, I'll be like, just sitting, sitting, sitting. I'll come to that. Biggest smile lights up my face. And it's such a cool feeling of nice. the recognition of just like, I have this life inside of me Mm. and I can see this life all around. And that's the most amazing thing. That's it. That's the most amazing thing about everything. And think about then how you start prioritizing the things you do and the way you act. Mm. If you are founded in that sort of a state, you know, like I'm not going to go around killing things that I don't need to kill. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go around taking advantage of things I don't need that won't actually... Because I am satisfied with the fact that I am life. Yes. I don't need this, these external things. Okay, just like like you were talking about earlier, Mm. how profound words come from a profound life, it's the life that you're living that comes first. And with this, if you bring it to this sort of principle of... Um, recognizing this life first and your actions come from that. It's like instead of the words coming from a profound life, it's like the the profound oh. life is almost coming from the recognition, constant recognition of this life bursting from you. And if that's what you're working from at all times, that is just going to lead to a profound life because people are trying to look at these external things of what's a profound life. But Sadhguru is saying, No, that comes internal first. Oh, that was nice. That just cut. Like, I I love it when things just click together. I feel like we need to, like, synthesize that down. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, profound words come from a profound life. Yes. 
And a profound life comes from recognition of life. Yes. As the base. Yes. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Okay. What do you guys think about that one, eh? Yeah. <laughs> if you, if I just sit there for five days, I don't have a single thought in my mind, I simply sit. They are the best times, if I do that once, next few years, non-stop, no vacation, no holiday, no weekly holiday, no nothing, we just go on and on and on. <laughs> because once you touch the source of your life, the way the surface functions is almost… people… people around me think I'm superhuman. No, this is not about being superhuman, this is about realizing being human is super. <laughs> oh, that's a classic Sadhguru line that gets you every time. Oh my god! Give it, give it the stamp. That's a universal, universal bar. bar. Oh my! Wow! Gosh. Oh my god! People think I'm superhuman, but it's not about that. It's about realizing that being human is super. Wow! 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 Woo! Wow! We! Wow! That is beautiful. How about when he was talking about mm. sitting without these creeping thoughts, that that is when he is, feels something like the most alive or feels the most recognition of this life inside of him. Because that's the opposite of what you'd think. Because a lot like with this whole external thing that we were talking about, how you're trying to get validation from what you're doing, you would think, oh, my life is going to feel great if I'm doing X, Y, Z. Hmm. But Sadhguru is saying, I feel the most alive when I'm just sitting, recognizing that I'm alive. Yeah. That's, that's a mindset change. And then all those, again, going back to it, all those external things that Sadhguru is doing that are fantastic are all rooted in that. If they're not rooted in anything, there's going to be no substance to it wow yeah I, th I think that also goes back to an episode we released a week or two ago about the purpose of life that Sagaru does yeah yeah and he summed up that whole video by saying the purpose of life is to live fully oh and the only way to live fully is to recognize life fully oh, so good <laughs> it's so good I feel like we're repeating some of the same stuff this episode, but it's stuff that we need to It's stuff to that repeat. we need to hear again. Stuff that you need to hear again. Stuff that everyone needs to everyone hear. Everyone needs to hear and then hear it every day. And yeah, making space in your day to give yourself that mindset switch. A human being is not just a bundle of thoughts and emotions. Like you're not just body, there's something more to this. Body you accumulated, what you call as my mind is an accumulation of impressions. This is a heap of food, that is a heap of impressions. Between these two heaps, where the hell are you? Yes, where are you? It's time everybody pays some attention because this life is not for good. Since you came and sat here, you are forty-five minutes closer to your grave. <laughs> yes, I'm not… It's a sobering I'm not, thought. I'm not wishing this on you, this is the nature of our life. This is not clock ticking away, it's our life ticking away, isn't it? Most people think other people die <laughs> you know? No, no, you and me will die. If you understand, if you understand that this is a limited amount of time and energy, you would see how to master this in some way. There's this body that, that's accumulated over time, mm. this mind that's an accumulation of impressions, but there's something behind that. Yeah. That is what you are. Yeah. And that, that's kind of the whole idea behind, like the artist name I go by is Kid Void. Mm -hmm. And the idea of void is what is it in the space between? Oh. What, what is it? And that, that comes from Buddhism, that's where I got that word at first. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's like that, if you aren't your thoughts, if you aren't this body that's accumulated over time, mm -hmm. and you're just this intelligent space, mm. this like perceiver that doesn't have a definition. Mm. And it's like, 
what is that and what are the things flowing through it that gives it its energy yeah. and that's really where like that word comes from so that's just a little behind the scenes yeah <laughs> but like in that. general i think it's such an important practice to ask yourself if i'm not this body if i'm not this mind what am i mm. and that that's also what uh Sagru's Isha Kriya his like free meditation is a mm -hmm. mantra meditation where you say I am not the body I am not the mind oh wow and those are the two things that you cool. continuously say and then leading into the like after that he's talking about then what happens when you die the recognition of your own mortality that's what he says a lot is is like people who recognize their own mortality might put all those pieces together it's almost like the thing that's underneath this that yeah. that intelligence that life whatever uh -huh. you want to call it recognizes that this body and this mind are something oh. impermanent oh and then that thing starts to see these as tools mm. not as itself Mm. And that's when you can really start being like what actually matters. Wow. Something that both of us have been trying to do lately is working on how fear opens up your mind in some ways. Mm. And I think fear a lot of times is the fear of losing your life and this perceived thing that's going to end. Yes. And so focusing in on that and really honing in putting yourself in situations that make you a little bit more afraid, I think a lot of times, for me at least, allows me to be like, oh, geez, why am I afraid of this? And then it's the recognition that death is something that is going to happen at some point. And then it comes right back to the point that he was talking about earlier, is it immediately then makes me go, oh, shoot. I'm alive. Nice. I'm alive right now. <laughs> nice. And that's a beautiful thing. And that is something to take a deep breath of all the time. Because if you're not doing that, it's fleeting. So if you're wasting any of that time, what are you doing? <laughs> High five for that one, bro. <laughs> You just... That was really good. Do whatever you want. You can't stop one minute from rolling, isn't it? Hello? Whoever you may be, can you stop it? No. It's rolling away for all of us at the same pace. Well, how quickly, how rapidly or how slowly simply depends on how joyful or how miserable you are. If you are... have you noticed this on a specific day, you were very happy. Twenty-four hours, poof, went off like a moment. Another day you were depressed. Twenty-four hours feel like a yawn. <laughs> yes or no? So only miserable people can have a truly long life. <laughs> if, if you're really joyful, if you're very joyful, before you know what's happening, it gets over. Wow. That's so cool. This reminds me of... Uh, one of the really interesting things to me, I don't know if any of you guys have this or if you do, mm. but my childhood memories, I do not have many childhood memories up until mm. I was like eight or 10 or something. And I know a yeah. lot of people who I like have a bunch of memories from when they were really young. Huh. And to me, it's almost feels like when I was a child, I was so happy and so mm. just like existing mm -hmm. that I wasn't even like picking up on specific memories. Whoa. I Well, I just don't know how to explain it. And, yeah. and, I, and I had like, like thanks to my parents and where I grew up and stuff, just a beautiful childhood. Yeah. And it's like, what if during that time I was just living? So it just went by like that. And a lot of like spiritual learnings and stuff, people will talk about your inner child. Yes. And that being the thing that always is you. Yes. And it's a process of getting back there. Hmm. Even artists like Picasso said stuff like that. He was like, wow. I spent my whole career trying to become a child again. Oh. And it's like, Oof. and it's because as a child, you are naturally in this 
blissful intuitive intuitive just like fully present state yes and then we learn to move ourselves up into our brain and be like this Mm. is what i am this is what i identify with whereas a kid when they're like playing games and stuff will say that they're something and will fully believe they're like they're like i'm a doctor (laughs) no i'm a doctor mom like why don't (laughs) like i'm healing you right now you know what's crazy Something I just recognized Mm. is I've never felt more connected to people than when I'm looking at them and I see true curiosity in their eyes. Even the curiosity of recognizing me as another being or curiosity with something that they're really excited about. There's Mm. nothing else that makes me recognize and appreciate the life of someone else. Another human. Oh my gosh, but then you also think if you watch an insect moving around, oh, it's always just them being like, what is this world? Yeah. What is this world? Yeah. We love insects. Yeah. We're insects big. Are cool. Yeah. Insects are cool. That's a really good point, though. I love that. Oof. In Tamil language, this is very well said. When somebody dies, we don't say he died. We say, Kalamaitanga. That means his time got over. Mm. Perfect. Mm. It's a perfect description. Time got over, that's all that happened. Mm. Time is getting over even now, isn't it so? Mm. How young you are, how healthy you are, how wonderful you are, it doesn't matter. Time is getting over. If you're conscious that you're mortal and it's a limited amount of time, Mm. naturally you would tweak up your energies to such a level that time would be enhanced for you. Mm. Otherwise, If you think you are here forever, you think you are an eternal being, then you have time for all kinds of rubbish that you don't care for. If you knew it is very limited, you wouldn't do one thing that doesn't matter to you, isn't it? Hello? I think so much of freeing your energy and becoming like… I love how he said you multiply yourself when your energy is larger. So much of that is what you cut out of your life. Mm. The things that you leave behind, where it's like, a lot of times when I was younger, I would play an hour or two of video games in the evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever. And it was just like mindless clicking, but I mean, it it was like fun, you know, it was something Mm -hmm. to do. But it's really interesting because I'll, I'll, I went back and played one of those same video games like a few weeks ago. I remember that. Yeah. yeah it's like my favorite game of all time called Skate 3. It's, it's an awesome game mm-hmm. because you can be super creative and it's all about creativity and skateboarding, which I just love. Yeah. But I was playing it and I just felt so unfulfilled. Wow. Because I realized that I was just kind of like sitting there like, clicking things Mm. when I could have been outside running around or I could have been yeah like in the woods sitting still whatever it is when you feel something that expands you yeah and then you go back to something that contracts you it's like you realize it for the first time yeah then you're like oh that is what this was actually doing to me wow good point (laughs) Damn. If you really knew, see, every day nearly quarter million people die on this planet just by natural process. And you think those people are all thinking tomorrow morning I will die? Hello? You think so? No. Lot of people were going to their office, somebody was going home, somebody had all kinds of dreams, young people, old people, all sorts of people die every day in the world. If you knew that it is possible, it's not my wish, I'll bless you with a long life, but it's possible tomorrow morning you and me could be dead, isn't it? Hello? Possible or no? It's not our wish, possible or no? If you know it is possible, that it is possible tomorrow morning I could be dead, would you have time to quarrel with somebody? Would you have time to bicker with someone else, do some nonsense that doesn't matter to you? You would do only what truly, truly matters to you. If every moment of your life, if you're doing what really, really matters to you, you will live a wonderful life.
beautifully said. Oh, dude, dude, I've heard him say that before, but it's never hit that hard. You and I, we could die tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah. What are we going to be doing? What's what what Oh my gosh. This this episode has just had that theme of Yeah. It started with the profound words come from a profound life. Yes. Profound life comes from a recognition of life. Mm. Recognition of life God. comes from recognition of mortality. <laughs> wow. We I figured like, it out. Okay. Most of our episodes usually are all like over the place and we're having good conversations, but this one really has that train. Yeah. That really concise train. And it all comes back to recognizing your own mortality. And that comes first. If I don't want to die a certain way, then I shouldn't be living in the way that if I'm dying, I'm like, oh, I died in this wrong way. Oh, you know, because I think so many people focus a lot on, oh, how am I going to die? Which is something that I've just never been focused on or worried about. If I'm living a fulfilling life, I'm going to die in a way that's going to be good. It's going to be I'm going to be doing something that's fulfilling. But if I'm living a life that's not fulfilled, I'm going to be more likely to die in a way that feels not fulfilling because I'm not doing... You know what I mean? Yeah, here's an idea that I got from that. Uh -huh. What if you use the idea of how are you going to die as a tool to be that initial starter to this whole oh, series we had? Oh, that could be cool. So you go... If I died while I was having a fight with someone. Yeah. You know, like yeah. I was having an argument with somebody I love. Mm. Am I going to die fulfilled if I die in an argument with somebody? Mm. And then it's like, no, I don't want to die when I'm at the peak of anger or yeah. just like yeah. not feeling. I'm like all tense, not feeling content. Yeah. Then it's like, so why not live in a way? That doesn't get me to that ability yes. to die there. Yes, yes. And then that kicks you into the recognition of life now because now you're like, right now I can be a thing that's either in a quarrel or not in a quarrel. Mm. And then you've empowered yourself to live this profound life Ooh. based on that principle and then the profound words just Dude, come later yeah, on. Yeah, just comes later on. <laughs> every time I do that, every time I, I have that intense recognition of if I died now or recognition of my own mortality, I feel like I live with so much passion. Mm. So much passion. Like Sadhguru talks about this life exuberance. Mm. feels like it's bursting from you and people notice that and it changes their day just like it's changing your own day. Beautiful. Dude. A beautiful episode. Shout out to the subscriber who sent this yeah, once you're again. you're awesome. This might be my favorite episode so far. We this love was you. That, yeah, yeah, that was such a, it was so streamlined. So streamlined. It was so satisfying. But of course, if anyone Ooh. else has other ideas, comment them below. If you have any Seriously. thoughts on what we were saying mm -hmm. on this four-step process to living a profound life. Yeah. Hey, maybe that'll become a thing. Maybe eh? that'll be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> that is cool. We should write that down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you have any thoughts what makes you feel the most alive? Oh, what makes like you that. recognize your own life exuberance bursting from your body? Mm. We want to hear your thoughts. Yes. We want to see what's going on with you. Like, subscribe. Much, Much love. love.